Kept you waiting, huh? Kept you waiting, huh? Kept you waiting, huh? Kept you waiting, huh? It's finally here, the challenge that, of the original batch, I've been looking forward to the most. Can you beat Metal Gear Solid V as Naked Snake? Solid Snake was fun, but it was my first shot at a Metal Gear Solid V run, and, while I think I did fine, I definitely could have done better on the rules. Raiden was fun, but a little disappointing since he's barely that much faster than normal mobility options in the game and can't use his HF blade in the game without mods. But Naked Snake is probably the easiest and most fun to replicate due to his wide variety of weapons and items that can be accessed directly or indirectly in Metal Gear Solid V. Naked Snake's being the inspiration for Venom Snake, Naked Snake's outfit being something I spent real money on, so it's nice to get something out of that. And especially because I'm insanely hyped for Metal Gear Solid Delta coming out, being that we just got the first gameplay demo about a month ago. Okay, let's get to the rules. For the rules, I was given a couple of different options by you guys in the comments, but the set I settled on was this. First off, I have to, at all times, be wearing an outfit of Naked Snakes, be it his Naked Fatigues, his Standard Fatigues, or his Stealth Suit. Headband is optional and will pop up about half of the time. Next, I am limited to the following equipment. The Survival Knife, which will be represented by CQC Executions. The Mark 22 Pistol, which the IMFDB says is the Wu Silent Pistol. The M1911A1 in the form of Target Master's Custom AMD-114-9. The M37 Ithaca Shotgun, or the S1000 Shotgun based on what I can tell by looks. The SVD Sniper Rifle, a Dragonoff that'll be our Bambatov SV. Target Masters XM16E1 as an AMMRS R4, the AK47 as the SVG76 as per usual, the Cigar Gas Spray as Sleep Grenades, the Handkerchief being CQC KOs, the M63 Stoner being the UNAAM according to the IMFDB, the Mosin Nagant in the form of Target Masters Renov ICKXTP, the Scorpion as the SZ336 as per IMFDB specifications, the Single Action Army in the Tornado 6, also according to the IMFDB. The RPG-7 in the Grom-11, again from the IMFDB. The Patriot as Target Master's AMMRS-4. The Directional Microphone as the Inscopes mic. Grenades as Frag Grenades. White Phosphorus Grenades as Petrol Bombs. Stun Grenades as Stun Grenades. Smoke Grenades as Smoke Grenades. Chaff Grenades as Chaff Air Support that I had never used once. TNT as C4, and no, the C3 is not a better substitute since it's a timer-based detonation thanks to Ava's modifications, as opposed to the remote detonation TNT. Claymores as M21D mines as per normal. Cigars as phantom cigars that I actually don't use in the run. Binoculars in the camera as the int scope. The AP sensor active sonar motion detector and mine detector in the prosthetic arms active sonar, kinda. Thermal goggles and night vision goggles in Metal Gear Solid 5's night vision goggles. Empty magazines as empty magazines, pentazamine as pentazamine, cardboard boxes as cardboard boxes, and the stealth suit as the stealth suit. Couldn't find an equivalent for the easy gun, a fork, the fake death and revival pills, life medicine other than maybe the meds you sometimes use for serious injuries, a book, which I guess could be the model box camo, but it doesn't matter because I never used it, the croc cap, bug juice, keys A through C, obviously, and the monkey mask, but we almost got exact matches for most equipment, so I'll take it. No buddies or vehicles for an extra challenge, and as a heads up, if you guys gave me a cool way to do something in the comments of the last run and I didn't do them this time, it was either because I forgot since it's been half a year, or couldn't because of the rules. So just recomment them this time, and I'll make a physical list to help me remember for the next run, can you beat Metal Gear Solid V as Big Boss from Ground Zero? Okay, I think that just about covers it. Let's get to the run! So, starting off, I went with the Naked Fatigues, which seemed tactically practical for the Afghan desert. Until upon writing this, I remembered that it's like six whole degrees at night there. And since I wanted to start the run off loud and proud, my main weapon of choice for our first mission to save cause, Phantom Limb, will be the M37. 
The other weapons for my starting set would be the SVD and the Mark 22, and I'll only use the bionic arm for its active sonar. After Ocelot forces me to ride through a whole ass sandstorm while half naked, we make it to Spugmay Keep, I wash the sand out of my mouth, thanks Ocelot, and I mire the drip while Ocelot really gets us into the Metal Gear Solid 3 mood and the Naked Snake mindset. I ditch D-Horse, sorry bud, and I hoof it through the first outpost to Violo Village, where I get to a vantage point that allows me to scout out enemy positions and then use my M37 to turn said enemies into a fine mist, then scanning the intel documents about Kaza's location. What, did you think my recon was for stealth purposes? Come on, you guys know me better than that. And at the very least, I did make my intentions clear that I was going to use the extremely loud-ass shotgun as my primary to start loud and proud. You can definitely ghost through this entire game without getting so much as spotted, the tools are there. But where's the fun in doing a cosplay challenge run when you can't use half of your weapons because they aren't silenced, or, god forbid, any of your weapons because you don't want to risk having to kill an enemy, getting a combat alert, or using reflex mode? Sure, Metal Gear Solid is a stealth series, but if that's all it was, everything would just be European Extreme Mode. Snake, Ryan. Europe. Anyway, after nuking Vilo Village's comms with some TNT, I take out another outpost with some grenades in the M37, and then blitz down to Guande, where the Soviets are holding cause. So I do some more recon, and for what other reason then? Picking them off with Pentazamine and my silenced SVD. What, did you think I was just gonna go in guns blazing? <laughs> Fat chan- oh wait no, I get spotted and then I go in guns blazing, yeah there it is. The SVD feels great, and I'll definitely get some use out of it later on in the run. But for the easier missions like this, I can basically tear Guande apart with grenades in the M37. Kaz somehow doesn't even recognize me, even though I'm literally wearing one of my most iconic outfits, probably because he's fucking blind. And then I try to give cause the line, but get cut off by some Soviet fuck. One tip I do remember being told in one of my challenges is that if I relocate Pequod's extraction point, I can take cause to the LZ without the skull showing up. So each character has played to their strengths in dealing with this problem so far. Solid Snake got caught by the skull's ambush, but used his stealth skills to avoid detection. Raiden was spotted, but used his cybernetically enhanced speed to outrun the Skulls, and Naked Snake, using his knowledge, experience, and intuition as the greatest soldier ever, sensed a potential ambush and swapped the extraction point at the last minute, outsmarting the Soviets and outplaying Skullface and XOF. Next is A Hero's Way, and long story short, I use Pentazamine in my SVD to take out the Red Shell Koopa with a body shot and a headshot. I tried to exfiltrate the hot zone by land, since I wanted to try to stay in the open world as much as possible for this run to replicate the feeling of Metal Gear Solid 3, but unfortunately that ruins an otherwise perfect run of this mission as I get spotted and shot right before making it out of the hot zone. Fucking figures. I was admittedly a little salty about that, but something that brightened up my mood right after was doing C2W next. I quickly head over to the Eastern Communication Post and take out any resistance I get with the M37 before knocking out the post's communications by destroying their comms equipment with TNT instead of taking out their parabolic antenna, something I figured out I could do thanks to a suggestion from you guys. With that done, I'm gonna... start the C2W mission? Huh? Yeah, another cool suggestion I got from you guys is that you can complete this mission before you even start it and get a cool unique dialogue for it. Seeing as completing a mission before it even starts is a very big boss thing to do, something that would require an understanding of the complexities of warfare on a grand scale in this instance specifically, I award myself six cosplay run points, points that are, unfortunately, painfully similar to the points from Whose Line Is It Anyway. Now it's time for Over the Fence, where I again plan to just basically brute force plow through everyone with my M37 and save the handjob master. I said what I meant, and I meant what I said. I stealth up to a point so that I don't get wiped out, and even nab some information and chloroform hanky some guy before getting spotted while trying to distract somebody with an empty mag, at which point I brain two dudes with the M37, hide in a cardboard box to evade detection, it was my destiny to be here, in the box, and then take advantage of a random sandstorm that Snake totally knew was going to happen and planned for and everything to save Dr. Bionicles over there. Time to meet Skullface for the first time, and yes, it is the first time, just think about it, in Where Do The Bees Sleep? 
Being that the only objective is to acquire the Hamid Mujahideen's honeybee weapon from De Samase Laman, I see that as a green light to M37 this bitch. At the Mountain Relay Base, with a combination of sniping with pentazamine in my SVD, using my human ticket puncher, the M37, and using cigar gas spray in the SVD to defeat armored enemies and groups of enemies respectively, I rescue the Hamid captive and now have the info needed to snag the honeybee. I make it to Samase Ford and systematically pick off any soldiers that get in my way with either the NyQuil handkerchief, cigar gas spray, or shredding them into human confetti with the M37, I get the honeybee, and me and the Hamburglar over here have a chat while his Gundam holds me in optimal swirly position while a group of frenzied monkeys kill all the Soviets. It should come as no surprise that, even with my playing extremely poorly here, the M37 cleans up everyone in the mist unit and, with a single shell to spare, I exfiltrate and complete the mission with all the honeybee ammo intact. Red Brass was a fucking pain in my ass, like seriously, for the first time ever. The first time I got killed because I was being too laissez-faire and not accounting for everyone's wearing body armor due to my extensive use of the M37 so far. The second time I TNT'd one red cap, bore a hole through the second like an auger, but couldn't find the third and really didn't feel like trying. So I restarted and finally, I strike the perfect balance of stealth knifing, stealth blowing people up with grenades, stealth immolation, and stealth shooting the last red cap right in the fucking mouth and running away while everyone shoots at me, and I complete the mission. Yay me! I head to Mother Base for a shower, and D-Dog almost licks me clean, but that just makes me want to go back to the base and visit more often, so I make a mental note to visit Mother Base anytime I exfil by Chopper. Now I gotta do Occupation Forces, so I figure since tanks are involved and I'm kind of on a timetable, now's a good time to test out my SVD to its fullest instead of relying on the brute force of the M37. I make it to Karya Sakura E and quickly and quietly pick off the Spotlight Soldiers to infiltrate the base, Interrogate and hanky a soldier to find out where the tank intel is. Blind and trank a soldier who spotted me with the Mark 22. Survival knife the one that didn't, and get the intel. Now, time to tank some tanks. I trank a guy on my way to set up my plan and pretty much use the classic tactic of just using TNT to take them out. And though I shit myself because I almost get caught, I silently dispose of these two domes that almost caused the tanks to get away. Beyond that, it was smooth sailing. I'm doing back up, back down now, so I grab my RPG-7, slap the I'm getting serious headband on, I blow up the first vehicle with my RPG, and then I immediately fuck up on some TNT placement. Mm. That aside, things go great as normal on this mission. I'm able to TNT the armored vehicles from my usual spot, I nab the prisoner and the launcher with the old cardboard box trick, and I finish off all the vehicles in Xville. On to Angel with Broken Wings, where I've got to save Malik, or Angel, a Mujahideen soldier that's been captured by the Soviets at the request of his deceased father. In short, just like always, I head to Lamar Kahate Palace and litter the road with TNT to blow up the armored convoy vehicle and make the transport vehicle stop so that I can save Malik, though unfortunately some random prisoners I wasn't even aware of somewhere were killed in the process. Side note. I actually paid attention to the story this time and forgot how much of a banger it is, even the info dumps after some missions that I egregiously called filler last time. This run was not only fun because of the Metal Gear Solid 3 hype, but also because it's the closest run I had to my original run back in 2015, where I was actively engaged in the story instead of just being encapsulated by the gameplay. Next up is Cloaked in Silence, and with this monster of an SVD, this shit could not have been easier. This run gave me a newfound respect for how badass Quiet is and how good of a character she is in terms of writing, fan service aside. I don't know, I was just looking at it and suddenly I got this irresistible urge to come. You should come, then you'll know what I mean. But I can't help but think that I would have been a lot less likely to be so friendly if she had, you know, actually presented a challenge here. It was admittedly pretty fun to beat the world's best sniper at her own game, even if she did let me win for Skullface's and XOF's plan. Also, another random side note, everyone in this game just killed it. Kiefer Sutherland, one of my more favorite actors, does a great job as Big Boss in facial acting, the sparse line delivery for Venom Snake, and the body language to make up for the few words. Troy Baker does a perfect job of being the halfway point between the Ocelot of Metal Gear Solid 3 and Metal Gear Solid 1. Stephanie Houston does a great job as Quiet with the acting and bringing a character with so few lines of dialogue to life to the point that I genuinely cared about her as a character, and I'm particularly impressed by something that I found out after the run, that Stephanie actually went through extensive military training to act as a sniper, 
Something I realized I'd been seeing the whole time between peeks of her through my sniper rifle scope before getting brained by her. Just a fantastic job on all fronts. Okay, enough gushing, time to ditch the headband and save this piece of shit. I'll be using the Mark 22 in stealth for Hellbound, since Emmerich definitely isn't worth the effort of trying to single-handedly fight an army to save him, and though I fumble on my way out of the Soviet base camp in the first attempt, the second time around I get out in near-complete stealth after tranking this guy, and after tranking everyone I had to between that base and the Afghanistan Central base camp, where Huey's being held, I arrive at my destination and slip my way past all of Cypher's goons to bag and tag this loser. Get to the LZ with Emmerich. I sneak out and, after a more difficult than normal time giving Sully the slip, I drill a hole through its head and exfiltrate away from Psychomantis and the man with the skull for a face. After Shalashaska interrogates Huey in the George Orwell room and Kaz says the imposter is sus, I die of cringe and then make out for Central Africa in the perfect fit for a mostly plains and jungle environment, the OG classic standard naked snake fatigues. Since I actually had fun being stealthy in a stealth simulator, I decided that I'm going to infiltrate Mafinda Oilfield with my Wu Silent Pistol as well. I can't exactly say I completed Pitch Dark stealthily, but I sure tried. I made my way through the Eli boat camp unseen until this one guy spotted me because I got too greedy for a diamond and tried to distract him with an empty mag, but came out from behind cover too quickly, but I just tranked him, got my diamond dogs, and moved on. I scout Mafinda out a bit, but almost get spotted, so I decided to just dive in. But they almost corner me and find me, so since I'm caged off in this area with only one entrance, I set up a couple of claymores that take out the snooping prying eyes, and in the confusion of the explosion, I escape using a smoke grenade. After narrowly avoiding detection with my Mark 22, I knock off the oil transfer pump and make my way over to the tank to hit it with some TNT, after which I escape into the dark and rainy night. As fun as stealth was, I'm reminded that it makes the game incredibly easy, so I switch to the polar opposite of stealth, the Tornado 6 as my single action army, for Lingua Franca. For this mission, I've got to nab the Viscount, but I just KO'd the Interpreter, his guards, and the Prisoner with a stun grenade, and Fulton extracted them all, stun grenaded this guard and prisoner and Fulton extracted them, and atomized the heads of a couple of people at Kaziba Camp, and rescued the last non-Viscount prisoner while in the middle of a firefight with a small army. I eventually get a taste of my own medicine and get shotgunned to death, but I'm just glad this shit ain't easy. I restart the mission since I don't want any retries on this, stun grenade and Fulton the first two prisoners and their respective guards, annihilate some noggins, rescue the last non-Viscount prisoner again, unfortunately get spotted but fortunately survive and win the subsequent gunfight with my shoot a golf ball sized hole through the first man he's dead on the spot single action army, and after going into hiding and then sneaking back around to Kaziba, I scan the documents there and get the location on the Viscount. Beyond that, regardless of a couple of snags along the way, I grab the Viscount and exfil. For Footprints of Phantoms, I slap on my headband, get to Datati Abandoned Village, and wipe out the walker gears with white phosphorus grenades and grenades. After that, I use my single action army to take out anyone who spotted me or attempted to tail me, and exfilled all over the course of like 10 minutes. Next is, of course, Trader's Caravan, but I decided to at this point swap out my loadout. The M37 gets swapped out for the XM16E1, the SVD gets replaced by the Ensmos and Nagant, and the single action army is switched for the M1911A1, so a more Metal Gear Solid 3 iconic loadout. With that in mind, I didn't plan on using any of these weapons here, and I didn't, as I just went to Nova Braga Airport, nabbed the truck like last time, and ran from the skulls. Rescue the Intel Agents is going to be the first time I actually use my new loadout, so I ditch the bandana and use my active sonar to find and rescue the first man. Not even mentioning how drip the fuck out I am with my XM16E1 camo matching the Naked Snake Fatigues fit. This gun is stellar for stealth assault operations. I can see why Signet and Big Boss were such big fans. Because with this beast, saving my last agent was a cakewalk. Blood Runs Deep, of course, yet again, is my most stellar mission. I got careless once and made a mistake, but it wasn't that big of a deal and ultimately I wouldn't let it ruin this fucking awesome run. First, I infiltrated Bomb Heavy Plantation without being spotted and killed the target without alerting anyone, but the mistake I mentioned earlier immediately follows as I walk right into this guard on my way out, though I'm able to quickly, quietly, and instantly take him out before he causes problems. Then I make it to Kunginga Mine to take out the Mbele squad, and... 
Though the prone fucks me up again and makes me stand up instead of laying down, I take out the guy that spots me and make it to the boys without anyone noticing. After that, I stun grenade them all and Fulton them out because fuck escort missions. But instead of exfilling like I normally do here, I went through the route you usually take the kids through and I was not disappointed. From the environment matching Metal Gear Solid 3s to the admittedly well done stealth from me to silent takedowns with the XM16E1, this part of the game more so than any other part of the run felt like Metal Gear Solid 3, and I can't express how much this hyped me up for Delta. To top it all off, I got codenamed Fox for this mission. A fitting codename considering the events of Metal Gear Solid 3 tell the story of the Fox unit's first missions. On to On the Trail, where I literally just follow this caravan of bitches and then dome the Major instantly. Boss, what about the intel he had? Fuck your intel, cause. It's all over the grass in the Angola Zaire border region of Central Africa. Now, onto the mission that, for me, cemented Kojima's horror chops, Voices. First I took out this nerd and made it past the first major outpost without being spotted. Then I snuck past this small outpost outside the Ngumba Industrial Zone and take out each of the guards posted in the foggy valley and the forest outside of Ngumba. And finally we make it to the Devil's House, where I really take the time to appreciate the atmospheric horror this time around before this malfunctioning dentistry robot blows my cover. <laughs> And me and an old friend have a lovely reunion. You got a great butt. I thought about beating Vulcan by dropping a vehicle on him, a trick someone mentioned in a past run, but I think I'll save that one for next run. For now, I just opt to drop a water tower on this fucker's head and escape while I can. I employ the Sigma tactic of telling these children their friend is dead and then smoking a vape cigar, very based. And then I start the War Economy mission, where I pretty much just sneak into Nova Braga, narrowly avoid a combat alert, and then assassinate the CFA official and leave. I usually do something with the arms dealer, like kidnap them both, assassinate the CFA official and kidnap the dealer, or something, but this time I was just in and out. Moving on to White Mamba, this mission is where all my non-lethal equipment really comes to shine, including my Mosin Nagant. I trank and recover all the kids in the outpost near Bwali Yamasa with my Mosin Nagant, and then head into Masa Village itself and proceed to systematically take down each of the child soldiers using about a dozen stun grenades and CQC takedowns. Suffice it to say that my heroism by the end of the run was worthy of the name Big Boss and worthy of the man who was Operation Snake Eater. After rescuing all the child soldiers, next was Liquid. I tried to dome him with the Nozen Nagant, but that didn't go over too well, so I fought him up close. I used Cigar Gas Spray, CQC, and all of my remaining Mosin Nagant ammo, but once he decided to set me on fire with a Molotov, I decided that dear old dad here was going to have to teach Eli there a little lesson in respect father to son. Eli throws a multi-cutscene bitch fit tantrum, and I'm onto close contact. I head back to the industrial zone and save both targets before tranking a couple of soldiers that spotted me, then exfilling in the midst of the confusion. For aim true ye vengeful, I was able to easily trank half the village from over 200 meters out, just like the end. I am the end. Save the number two and the wandering prisoner, and then finish tranking the rest of the child soldiers, including their red brass, and save them before exfiltrating. For hunting down, I was able to find the tracker with my night vision goggles thermals and my active sonar, but though I tried to use the Mosin Nagant to complete the secondary mission objective of extracting the trafficker and his five escort guards, I think I missed a single one. Regardless though, I completed the mission and it was on to the next. Time for Root Cause, where I used my M1911A1 to dispatch two hostiles in the enemy camp, rescue the target, and get to the extraction point with nobody the wiser until I'm in the air and on my way out. Next mission won't be so easy though, as I've got to get to Code Talker, but first I have to get past the Invisibility Skulls, where I can, fan service aside, appreciate their bare minimum personality through their different clothes, get creeped out at the aspect that Quiet could have been turned into one of these freaks, laugh at their fucking tactical black lipstick, 
and then cower in fear as I watch them spawn the best snipers in the game out of the ether, ready to blow me apart. I always find boss fights in Metal Gear Solid V fun, and this was no exception, especially since this is a little reminiscent of the boss fight against the end, even if you can't wait for them to die of old age to cheese a win. It was fun to sneak around and essentially beat them at their own game and become the man who defeated the end, which has double-layered coolness if you also know that the parasites that the Skulls use are similar to the end's own special ability as well as the other Cobra members' special abilities to some degree, but most specifically the end if I remember correctly as Code Talker actually experimented with his corpse. Unfortunately, my active sonar wasn't much help here, but eventually I was able to defeat all four Great Value Quiets and move on to the house infiltration with my M1911A1 in hand. I quietly disposed of a couple of guards that either spotted me or almost did, and found our cute little pop-pop. I gave the reinforcements the slip and made out on my helicopter, though while Code Talker attempted to explain the story of the No More Heroes series to me, Cypher unleashed the metallic arcade on my helicopter, killed my best friend Pequod four, or two, maybe six, no wait, maybe two, well, my best friend Pequod. So, this time, it's personal. For my battle against the Skulls, I'm slapping on the Infinity Bandana and busting out the Patriot. When I tell you that this fight was a piece of cake, I mean that I first tried that bitch with almost zero difficulty. The Infinity Bandana alone is certainly enough to warrant an A-rank restriction, but with the Patriot, that shit is busted. The Skulls ain't standing a fucking chance, I just dumped 100 556 rounds into one or two of them, reloaded, and did that shit again about six times in all before they all ceased to be a problem. And you can be damn sure that I fulton them all out too, whole bitch took less than five minutes. Ocelot shows up and we're like, okay, Travis beats Fu and Damon and now he's gotta save the future with his future family, we get it. No more talking about no more heroes. And Code Talker's like, sure, have you guys ever heard of Kingdom Hearts? This isn't interesting. Some more fun torture later, and we're off to OKB0 thanks to Huey's totally consensually extracted intel. So I keep the M63 stoner equipped, keep the scorpion equipped, swap the Patriot for an AK-47, swap the Infinity Bandana for a normal one, and swap my Naked Snake fatigues into the final outfit of the run, the Naked Snake Sneak Suit. Fucking tongue twister that was! I was told I could just drive straight through OKB0 as long as I had a smoke grenade in the passenger seat, but since I can't drive in this run, I'll have to try that out next time. For now, I slowly and methodically inch my way through the base, using smoke grenades to cover my tracks as needed, though it did take a couple of retries to sneak perfectly through the base with no combat alerts. Still though, I wanted to try, and thought it would be perfect for a naked snake run. After that, I let this whole cutscene play just so that I could get the feel of the OG run, and let me tell you, doing this every time would drive me fucking insane, but after 15 complete runs of the story without really paying attention to, or watching, or listening to any of the cutscenes or story, watching it all go down and listening and paying attention to everything hits different. It's almost nostalgic even though it really hasn't been that long since the game dropped, like less than 10 years. Still, I didn't even go full immersion with all the missions like the ones where you can't customize your character, or basically cutscene only missions and all the Walkman tapes and all that stuff, but still, I had a great time. Now, let's watch Volgan kill himself. real target is the Philosopher's Legacy, isn't it? Wow, can we get a replay on that? Wait! Absolutely astonishing right there, astounding, play of the game. Now stay dead this time, you fucker. I guess now it's time to defeat the weapon that surpasses Shagohod. Fuck you, Huey. Now, keeping in mind that on my Solid Snake run, the Cephalanthropus boss fight took about a half hour, and on my Raiden run, I kept fucking it up and it took an hour and a half, or three tries. Or potentially it was the opposite, though I'm pretty sure the Raiden run was the difficult one since I had those recording problems and decided to end the run right after the main game. Regardless, 
To give you so much as a sense of an idea of how much easier this already fairly easy if not time-consuming boss fight was with the Patriot, I beat the thing in 15 minutes, half the time of a normal attempt. No need to swap weapons, or get more ammo, or constantly reload your one-shot rocket launcher or six-shot grenade launcher, just dump 100 556 rounds into it, reload, and repeat. I moved around and stuff, but that was the long and short of any difficulty. The last run traumatized me of Sully's railgun, but it ain't do shit this time. I even kept Pequod safe from the homing rockets, the thing didn't stand a chance. Honestly, I kinda felt bad. Like, fuck Psycho Mantis, I don't give a shit about that guy until the last five seconds of his life where he uses his immense psychic power that can control a Metal Gear to open a fucking door for Solid Snake. Which, considering this run, kind of fucks me over anyway because the operation where Mantis helps Snake is almost directly preceding when that fucker kills Venom and tries to kill Big Boss in the events of Metal Gear 1 and 2, so fuck him anyway. But Selly is just a cute baby boy. Now, I didn't take revenge on Skullface since I was so excited about trouncing Selly that I left to go tell my mom, but Cos covered me and Huey ruined our revenge because he's a little bitch. Time for the post-game. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, to reward you for your patience in the absence of any Metal Gear challenge runs from me, I also did the post-game, including a quiet exit. To start the post-game, to know too much, where I've got to extract a CIA agent in Afghanistan, which I basically do by using cigar gas spray to knock out or confuse all the Soviet Walker gear pilots as I Fulton him. Simple as. Got Foxhound on that one too, which is kind of thematic since that'll be Big Boss's unit later, and that's the first code name of the post game. After that, I head back to the Code Talker house and head into the jungle to retrieve some materials from Cypher, and after dispatching some extra observant guards with my AK and alerting XOF's PMC CFA to my presence, some fucking Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry, Roadrunner, and Wily e. Coyote ass shenanigans ensues, as I basically either blow up everyone with body armor using my claymores, or blow up the bridge they're standing on when they set off my claymores and fall to their death. Professionals, ladies and gentlemen. I only kill professionals. I get the intel and the materials, and I'm able to get both containers without getting spotted. Fucking gotti. Next is Extraordinary, where I gotta go to Spooge Keep and get an Eminem mixtape or something. Naturally, when vying for something so precious, I literally just bust out my M63 stoner and AK-47, kill everyone, and chase away an attack helicopter to get it. It was not an Eminem mixtape. I fucked up Proxy War Without End a couple times, but really only had to restart once, and it was right at the beginning anyway. Everything else was salvageable, and the RPG-7 made short work out of all the armored vehicles it was used on, including the enemy gunship at the end, so no real issues there. Now... Just one last mission remaining. Aw, oh, hell no! So for this mission, I'll just be using the good old RPG-7, and... Honestly, guys? This shit was fucking easy! I think I mentioned it in one of my previous runs, but for some reason, half the time when I play this mission it's hard as balls, but the other half of the time it's easy as fuck! After about 10 minutes of the most badass cutscene fight I've seen in games in a while, I just kinda dominate with my RPG. Now listen, all my talk of easy isn't to say that I got it on my first try, it was just comparatively easy. I died three times, but three compared to 20 plus is a fucking joke. And I didn't need to break or bend any rules, no air support, no cheese, no stealth, just my RPG and some timing. After that, Quiet and I have the most explosive bro hand clasp ever, a surviving snake from Operation Snake Eater gets revenge on Snake for his cannibalism, Quiet makes me tear up a bit, and that's the run! So I'm sure there were a couple of small things I messed up on, like moving with the sniper rifle or rocket launcher, not only using the fork, maybe there was a way to create the easy gun, etc., but I'm incredibly happy with this run. Metal Gear Solid 3 is easily one of the best, most fun games in the series, and being able to be Naked Snake in Metal Gear Solid 5 was probably one of the most fun playthroughs I've done on the channel. I'm genuinely getting giddy just thinking about it. It was the most fun challenge, and the one that, to me, felt the most authentic while playing through. I guess this is also my thank you to you guys for getting me to 5,000 subscribers. You guys are fantastic, and I appreciate you all so much for getting me here. This channel is only what it is thanks to you guys, and I will always remember that and always be grateful. I'll try to get another Metal Gear Solid video out sooner, so you guys aren't waiting for Ground Zero Big Boss for another half a year, but we'll see what I can do. In early December, I'm gonna get my wisdom teeth out, so I plan to have this out by mid-December? But it might be a month or two until the next video, so hold it down for me, guys. Okay, remember all the socials and stuff in the description? 
Be sure to do all the YouTube stuff to support the video. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Can You Beat Metal Gear Solid 5 as Naked Snake, and I'll see you next time. Peace.